So if you've been, you know, even somewhat involved in the DK community as of late, it is no surprise that there's been a ton of debate surrounding haste. Now, what the value of haste is. And I think that in whichever direction you go, that to some extent, the opinion that people hold around haste is wrong. And as a consequence of the um, of Subtle's video that sparked this whole debate around haste and the value of it, a lot of people have started to pick up haste without understanding why it is as good or bad as it is. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that's a bit of a problem because <clears throat> if you don't understand what it is that makes it good, it's also hard to utilize the benefit of it. And a lot of people that stack it blindly in, in um, progression and uh, when trying to optimize for DPS, for example, are, are getting less benefit from it than someone who knows how to press the buttons correctly. And so that's kind of what we're getting into here. Uh, but first, I want to, we've briefly talked about it on, on the stream before, but I want to hop into this, <coughs> this Wowhead article. It's part of the DK guide. So it's obviously something that is pushed to a great audience. One of the first things that you're going to do when you um, get to 85 as a DK in the current landscape that we are right now is that you're going to go to Google and you're going to type in Blood DK Guide. And 99% of circumstances, it is going to be a Wowhead article that's going to pop up at the top. which I think generally they hold a pretty high standard. Um, but the reason why I wanted to, to emphasize that is because we, um, this is kind of the starting point and a, a place where a lot of people go to get their information and, um, and I think perhaps there there needs to be some some nuance nuance that we get from uh, from uh, from articles like like these. And there's you know obviously a great deal of information, um, but I think that a lot of it is wrong. You feel yourself relaxing more. <clears throat> so. Let's just go through and, and read a little bit about what we what we have here. Of course, everything here is in regards to haste. Um, so we're just going to go from, from top to bottom. Some commentary along the way as well. Recently, there's been a sizable uptick in rhetoric regarding haste and stacking it to an arbitrary number in order to have a lower, in order to lower your rune cooldown to 7.5 seconds. This um, arbitrary number be 1,421. Uh, it is important to know that this is a made-up value and is not backed up by any sim data. Let's stop there for a second. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it's not backed up by any sim data. Maybe true when talking about um, some of the healing aspects, maybe, um, in regards to haste versus mastery. But there is a clear cutoff point in the sims that can be easily checked um, with gear. Where haste, once you reach that point, becomes all of a sudden super valuable. So let's say that you go from 
from 1,380 haste to, and, you, and you, you, you reforge an item, and that reforge brings you up to 1,430, for example. That haste is incredibly valuable, whereas expertise and, and crits would normally be better DPS stats. In that uh, range, haste is just super good. So clearly there is something that happens at that 7.5 mark. And we'll, we'll get into that for sure. Um, and, and in this section, it's important to know this is a made of value, is also a bit disingenuous because he also refers to the 7.5 seconds, um, which I'm not. Sh can't, I don't. Can't remember if it goes into um, further down in, in this this article here, but obviously this 7.5 second uh, cooldown is because that's how your global cooldowns line up. You have a 1.5 second global cooldown, which means you're gonna be pressing your spell 1.5 seconds later. You gotta press another spell so on and so forth, and the idea is once you get to your fifth global, which would be um, the uh, 7.5 second timer, then that would be the time when your uh, rune comes up cooldown again, so you can use your spell again. So it's, it's obviously not arbitrary, this number, which I think which is maybe where this uh, article is a bit disingenuous. But it, now it's about looking at this 7.5 second value. Is it important? Is it something that we actually have to, um, you know, hard focus on? Or can we be pretty eh about it? And, and go for a lower value or a higher value? Or, or is this some type of, of a soft cap, if you will? A, a number that we should strive to have and then anything above it is just, uh, you know, good, but less value or something along those lines. So haste is undeniably a strong stat when combined with our blood shield mastery. It makes perfect sense to real <coughs> it makes perfect sense to realize that a faster rune recharge rate will have a net gain in death strike per minute or death strikes per encounter. But Haze does not have a soft cap. Okay. So what does soft cap mean? Well, when we think about expertise, for example, expertise has a soft cap because once you get to 26% mastery or expertise, I mean, then it has a soft cap in that you are only going to get benefit from the parry portion, but not from the dodge portion after 26. And so that means that it has a soft cap of 26 and a hard cap of 56. Um, and haste doesn't have anything like that. It's you, you don't stop gain, gaining benefit from haste at any point. Um, and you will never get enough haste in Cataclysm to where you are so, you have so many runes that you possibly cannot gain anything more from from having haste. Um, so this phrase, the soft cap phrase, it comes from Subtle's video, where he says that you can think of it as a soft cap of sorts. Now, <clears throat> he doesn't say that it's a soft cap. 
what he maybe should have said is that this is a break point. The 7.5 second room cooldown regeneration is a break point. Not a soft cap, not a hard cap, it's a break point. So I think that this whole thing about Haze not having a, a cap or a soft cap is a weird thing to have a debate around because clearly that's not what anyone says. This is just semantics. Um, <laughs> this is just a, this is maybe a linguistics debate, but it's, it's not a debate <laughs> around the gameplay. And so, um, Haze does not have a soft cap, that is very true, but there is a breakpoint that influences your rotation. And that's important uh, to keep in mind. And so let's just put aside this whole cap <laughs> word for a second, because the word soft cap doesn't mean anything. And um, it's not something that should be even in this debate, just replace the word soft cap with breakpoint. And then you're fine. Okay, cool. If you've done the fight like Hero Her Heroic Sinestra encounter, you already noticed that once you get 100% haste buff for three minutes during the encounter, even this amount of, of haste is not a soft cap. It does, however, allow you to skip using blood runes entirely and prioritize that strike in Okay. Um, don't know what this is here for, really. Like, um, I think this is just supposed to reiterate that that there's not a cap, which I think most people who have a, a, at least some form of a brain will understand that that th th there's no haste cap per se. If you're looking for less downtime in your rotation, which haste is, that's not necessarily haste's primary function, but it's a it's a function of, of, of haste as well. Um, the best way to gain more winning power from talents is from talents, uh, or <laughs> the best way is to gain more winning power from talents through Scent of Blood, Butchery, and Crimson Scourge. Yes, absolutely. Scent of Blood is great, but of course, it's also affected by haste. So you get more runic power value uh, from Scent of Blood if you have haste. Um, and um, Crimson Scourge, of course, another great tool to get runic power. Uh, but Butchery, I don't know. <laughs> That's, uh, that's a very low value talent. Um, very low value runic power as well. So I would never consider running butchery. Um, stacking more haste for less downtime is more of a bad luck protection, which I disagree with, uh, against streaks of no runic empowerment procs. Using the 7.5 second rune, Recharge Reasoning is simply a cover for wanting to deal more damage. And dealing more damage to the tank should be your last goal after surviving. Survive after surviving and being tanky enough to let healers respect to a DPS for some encounters. Um. Oh man. Oh man. <sighs> Not enough coffee can can make can make <laughs> can, will not make me tired after watching or reading a a, a st statement like that. If you've been watching my channel or my stream um, at any any time before, then 
you know how fundamentally I disagree with this statement here. First of all, um, using the 7.5 second uh, recharge, recharge reasoning is simply a cover for wanting to deal more damage. Dealing more damage is is, is definitely not a bad thing. and um, But I think if you are using the 7.5 second recharge argument for wanting more tankiness and more healing instead of picking up mastery which they aren't always mutually exclusive you can have both but if you pick up haste instead of mastery as an argument to be more tanky then you are wrong Picking up more haste over mastery will not make you more tanky. No. Dealing more damage is almost never a bad thing. There is no denying that your first priority is to survive. Surviving is obviously the biggest priority. And if I ever made anyone feel anything to the contrary, then I apologize for poor wording and um, <laughs> and perhaps not making my point clear. This is for sure the biggest priority. Now, just because, just because you can do more, just because you survive, doesn't mean that you can't do more than just surviving. Surviving is the bare minimum. Now, what do we do with that other, um, other part you know, that we do when we're alive? So. Be, being tanky enough to let healers respect to a DPS for some encounters. Um, I absolutely hate that this is in a wowhead guide because tanky tanks do not reduce the amount of healers you need. Healers are almost exclusively responsible for healing the raid and not the tank. The tank gets healing through passive means like, like Beacon, Life Bloom, Atonement, and their own self-healing. So. Um, and... This is, I've been talking about this for, you know, many weeks now, that healing is, you know, the healer issue is more about the raid. It's not about the tank per se. So if you, you can never be tanky enough to let a healer respec just because of the tank damage. Now, you can drop healers. Absolutely. Last week, we had one healer in Atremides. Uh... Am I supposed to be tanky enough for, for us to have zero healers? Um, do I need to... Um, do I need to uh, heal the raid with my blood worms? Or, you know... <laughs> um, we ran three healers on most fights. Four healers on some. Which is significantly less than a lot of the tanks, including the author, that are stacked up the wazoo with mastery... Uh, tank for peace, etc. Um, so, this is just not true. Um, so I think, so I think having this in in a in a guide of this caliber that has such a far reach 
is is just disingenuous and, and I think it's it's not great information to put out there. Um, putting your personal damage increase above all else is a selfish playstyle and may not be what your raid group needs. This is true. Putting your personal damage increase above all else is selfish. But removed, you know, above all else, that's a weird phrase. Like, that's not... Getting more haste is not putting your personal DPS above all else. Uh, if you are going so recklessly in your offensiveness that you completely disregard any defensive talents, you completely disregard mastery, um, then this is true. Then that would be selfish. But there is a very, very big middle ground between going full beefiness and going full absolute parse brain. And, and going for no damage increase is, I think, equally selfish because you're just making your raid worse off. In a 25 man, it has less of an impact. The damage certainly matters especially if you want to go for quick kill times um, and you're in a guild with people who who want to get a good parse themselves um, like for example on now when we're trying to do atremides in one uh, in one phase um, if I'm not doing at least 40k DPS by the time the air phase comes then I've let down my raid there's no way you you make that push unless the tank is also doing a considerable amount of damage. But I think where it's even more important for every stage of your journey, especially in progression, is in Tanman. Because that increased damage you get from, from your one tank is proportionally uh, so much higher than uh, than in in twenty five man and it's and damage incoming is also a lot less and it's not like in a t in a ten man that you would ever be going you know from one healer to zero or from two healers to one just based on tank damage that was never gonna be something that's it's even even remotely considered um. So that's maybe something to be to to you know keep in mind when reading things like this. It's that um, Ebia is only rating twenty five man, and um, he is writing it from this from his that perspective. And while I disagree about it from a twenty five man perspective, I disagree with it uh, on a deep and fundamental level on on ten man. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so what is Hayes best at then? Haste is first and foremost a, deep, a damage increase secondary stat. Yes, I agree with this. It is not the best DPS stat, but it is first and foremost a DPS stat. Now, the reason why it's a good DPS stat is because it does provide defensive utility as well. It's not a lot, but you get on average one extra death strike per minute by being at the 7.5 second um, number. And, and that's not nothing, but it's not huge. Um, but the reason why haste and other offensive stats would be better than mastery at some point is because we're at the stage where a lot of our a lot of our mastery and healing from from our healers 
are getting pushed into overhealing. Like if you ever looked at your healing breakdown, it's you're just getting so much overhealing. And if if you um, are if you stack more mastery, you're just getting more overhealing, and you could provide more utility to the raid doing something else. Are you saying someone who wrote this with too much haste and didn't see all the angles? I think so, Hando. I think so. I think so. <laughs> um, well, and so haste is a good offensive stat that brings some defense utility. So what it what it is is that it's a middle ground stat. If you it provides less DPS than a than expertise past soft cap, for example, but it provides more defensive value than expertise past soft expertise cap. Um, so that, that means that haste is a very good and natural stat to combine with mastery, both because they have good synergy with each other, but also that it allows you to bring more offensive utility while still retaining some defensive utility. Would you recommend playing haste at low-ish item levels? Talking about 355-ish um, here. Um, depends. If you're rating 10 man, absolutely. If you're ra rating 25 man and are pushing for heroic, um, heroic progression, then, um, then I don't think it has that big that much value but i would look at your logs and uh, determine how much um like how much you're struggling with uh, survivability and how the healing breakdown is breakpoints we hate haste caps here sorry sorry i shouldn't mention haste cap <coughs> one more question that might have been asked already uh, should i go for damage tier 11 set or tank one that's level also uh damage one just has better stats, and um, the um, the force set is uh, is very good. So, <clears throat> prioritizing haste over any other stats is strictly. It's even emphasized here. Prioritizing haste over any other stats is strictly for tank parsing. So, what this is saying is that if you are, unless you are absolutely going full beefiness, giving up any type of defensive utility, then that is go. Then that is for. Then that is for tank parsing. Um. I don't know about that. There's a big difference. Okay, so. Tank damage. Tank damage does not equal tank parsing. Say it with me, everybody. Tank damage does not equal tank parsing. You doing damage as a tank? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Kronos. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Hando. Um, you doing damage is never a bad thing. It's about what, what trade-offs are you doing in order to get that damage? A... It's safe to assume that anyone going strictly for defensiveness 
compared to someone who has a pretty offensive but not completely parse brain build that there is going to be a difference of about 10k dps between those two and um and that that, that is pretty backed up in both sims and in um in logs that i've been looking at so un un unless you can drop a healer because of the tank incoming tank damage which we never can really maybe like you know maybe there are some certain fights where the incoming tank damage um would be that little breaking point that would be needed for you to be able to drop a healer but i have not seen that i have not seen that being substantiated anywhere and as can be seen by the raid that we did last week i was at about 88 percent mastery uh <laughs> way lower than anyone should be <laughs> probably uh, unless you're doing what we're doing um that was still enough haste for us to be able to drop ton of of healers for every single fight in the raid tier even going down as far as one healer on Matrimedes, for example and having um two healers and one healer doing the ad kiting on magma um it is it is not the tank damage that that's going to determine whether or not you can drop a healer okay um haste does not provide more benefit than stamina or mastery for improving your survivability this is true this is true we as tanks should be looking to make smart gearing choices that fit our specific raid group yes Do not blindly stack haste to an arbitrary number without understanding the fundamentals of your rotation, stat priority, and your raid's needs. Yes. Okay. So, haste does not provide more benefit than stamina or mastery uh, for improving your survivability. This is true. I... Um, this is where I, I kind of disagree with Subtle's video that he made a while ago. I think that maybe he has changed his stance a little bit on, on, on this as well from a survivability perspective. Um, but I think it's pretty safe to say that haste at this point does not provide more benefits defensively than than stamina or, or mastery. Um, but... Then he follows that up with, we as tanks should be looking to make smart, smart gearing choices that fit our specific raid group. And I can't think of anything um, that's more dumb than just completely uh, going full, full beefcake. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know where if, there, if there's any any case where you would benefit your raid by going complete complete defensiveness you know uh, stone skin gargoyle um, full stamina mastery dodge parry both stamina and chan or trinkets uh, so it's it's a bit contradictory that's um, that is to say that it's strictly for tank parsing and then that we should be looking to make smart gearing choices because if you are looking to make smart gearing cho choices then then you would be looking to make smart and informed uh, trades because you cannot survive more 
than than make than surviving. <laughs> you know, either you survive or you don't. Now, now, okay. So I I, I think I want to I want to go back a little bit to talk about this whole number here that stacking haste to an arbitrary number in order to lower your rune cooldown to 7.5 seconds it's important to know that this is a made up value and it's not backed up by any sim data okay so let's try to understand a bit why the 7.5 second breakpoint not soft cap breakpoint why why that matters we're going to use our first global as our death strike and 1.5 seconds after that we're going to use a heart strike three seconds we're gonna use a rune strike. 4.5 seconds. We're gonna use a blood boil. Six seconds. We're gonna use a another rune strike. And of course, we haven't been lucky with runic empowerment procs or or whatever. We've just we just use our 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 cooldowns and our, our, our spells and our procs and everything like that. And so now you would say that because we have that 7.5 second room recharge, we, that allows us to use our death strike and go into a new cycle. That's why you have it. Um, well, kind of, but this is not so bad either. You know, if you if you don't have that that number and you just hold your global a bit, then that's that's not really the end of the world. Um, then you could probably gain more value from other stats if that's just the trade-off that you're making. Um, but the the problem is that if you have if you have more globals to spend which will happen quite frequently especially if you get runic empowerment procs which it's a 45% chance it will happen quite frequently um, then the problem is is if you would have a um, Let's see what a um, what a kind of a a normal non haste stacked um, room recharge would be. So here we have how much haste do we have? We have five hundred. That's that's about normal. That's I think that's what the one of the um, sets in the wow head section recommends as well, is that then we will have eight seconds um, recharge. And we would have, so then we would have to wait to pop our, our DS here. But what would, what would actually end up happening is that we would not spend DS on that global we would actually spend, you know, maybe a a another HS because you got a runic empowerment proc. And then your DS would not come until you get to your ninth global cooldown or your 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 ninth second GCD window after after your first uh, DS. Um so that essentially just means that you're pushing back your your DS by one and a half seconds after every time that you are, um, every time that you're GCD capped. And if you're not GCD capped, then it just looks like this and it's not the end of the world. 
Um, but it's still, you know, it's still, it's still allowing you to, um, to, um, get more DSs out. You don't have downtime, as much downtime in your rotation. Um, but if you're looking for, you know, more of a defensive perspective, uh, then, then this is not the end of the world. Is this number a big deal? Not really. Like it, it, it has a impact, which is why we go for it. But it's not like you want to sacrifice everything in order to hit that number. Um, but I also wanted to illustrate this because it's not an arbitrary number. It does have an impact and it does change your rotation and it, it, it does make sure that when those conditions are met, that you have more globals in your rhymes, in your rune cycle than you would otherwise spend. Then not having a 7.5 second recharge on death rune on your death rune is going to um, make it's going to delay your second cycle one and a half seconds more than you have to. So even if the sims only indicate a DS that you get about one extra DS per per minute by going more haste than as to as opposed to going no haste. Um, in actuality, because of because we're human and because we're not uh, predicting our future spells very well, it's likely going to end up being slightly more than one death through or one uh, DS on average per per minute that you gain from it. Which is something to consider as well, that we are human. Unfortunate at times. <clears throat> now, the... I should probably equip my gear again. Now... I think, so I want to talk a little bit about the, the flip side as well. And a lot of people are overhyping haste, which I think that haste is overhyped at the moment, despite my recommendations in the, in the damage guide, which if you, if you are, if you are looking to optimize your damage, I think haste is good, but only after hard expertise cap, really. Uh, with the small benefit that it does increase your, your healing a little bit as well. Um, but when Subtle made his video, I think he was way too optimistic about haste. Um, and I think his methodology for gauging how good haste was, um, was a little bit missing not misinformed but it was anecdotal and um didn't really have that much bearing um on on how things actually turn out especially for the majority of, of people so for example one of the things he has to, to back it up is well you know i wouldn't have rank one healing if it wasn't because it actually works. Um, well, you know, I think it frankly comes down to him just being a good player. You know, haste, if you want to look about, look up why haste is, is good for offensive purposes, it's not necessarily because of the room recharge. Like that's good. But the primary reason why haste is so valuable from an offensive perspective is because we have scent of blood, giving us um, 10 running power per melee swing, assuming we have the buff, which we get 
um, after taking damage. Um, Blood Cake Blades, which is obvious, which is doing a lot more damage than Sims initially indicated, but have have now been accounted more for, um, and it's a a staple for every Blood DK. Don't run without it. Bloodworms, which does a significant amount of healing and damage, frankly. Your army scales with haste. So technically, if you if you wanted to be that guy, you could have a full haste set. Swap uh, swap sets on pulls, and. Uh, And um, then swap back to your normal set, but uh, you know, we're, we're probably not going to be doing that. We're probably just going to be in a normal set, so you get the damage from mass from haste for your army, and then you are going to be getting the value from haste on your pet as well. Just snapshots a lot. Um. And that's kind of the, the 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 main thing that you get out of haste offensively, but then of course getting the um, getting the extra runes also very good, and I think especially the seven point five seconds mark is important because of the um, because of the um, like when you have that extra global um, in your rune cycle. Do you spend it on in within that cycle, or do you wait? Well, if you have some some five seconds rune uh, rune recharge, you don't have to decide. You you just uh, start your new cycle right away. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to say with haste. <laughs> 